four satellites of the European Space Agency tour the battlefields where the Earth's magnetism fights the wind from the sun. Their task is to make sense of electric streams that wrestle like invisible dragons far over our heads. And as the satellites orbit in company, it's called the cluster mission. Space scientists have already discovered that all the planets, including the Earth, swim among swift electric particles thrown out by the sun. This solar wind fills a huge bag in space, and our own planet is deep inside it. Some experts say that the energy delivered to the atmosphere by the solar wind is trifling compared with the sun's visible rays. But others aren't so sure. Intruding particles from the sun concentrate high in the air over subpolar regions, where they race in to make the glowing auroras and heat the upper atmosphere. In theory, there might be important effects lower down, if, for example, warm winds at the surface are encouraged to flow towards the poles. Cluster may help to settle this controversial issue. The satellites would explore a cavern in space created by the Earth's magnetism. It pushes aside most of the particles coming from the sun. But some of them infiltrate through the magnetic shield. How many? And do they break through the front door? Do they come in stealthily or in a rush? Apparently some of the solar particles slip around to the back door and then blast their way in. How do they manage that? and others battle for admission at weak points in the shield, which lie over the Earth's magnetic poles. It's an electrical puzzle laid out across thousands of miles of space, and each satellite in the cluster is a state-of-the-art electrical laboratory. It can measure electrical and magnetic fields of force. It can sense peculiar electric and magnetic waves. And each satellite samples the streams of electrons and charged atoms that race past it. Operating as a team, the four satellites give a three-dimensional action picture of events in the region between them. Cluster's orbit enables the satellites to visit all the key places in turn. It extends 130,000 kilometers from the Earth. Farther out in space, in an associated European mission, SOHO studies the upheavals in the sun itself. It also reports the solar weather sweeping towards the Earth, which reaches cluster an hour later. NASA participates in the SOHO and cluster missions, and a world-encircling network of ground observatories collaborates with cluster too. They watch out for the effects in the atmosphere when the infiltrating particles arrive from the sun. Until scientists understand the antics of the particles, they can't be sure how the Earth's environment in space connects with its environment at ground level. That is Cluster's urgent challenge. Our ancestors worshipped the sun. They knew perfectly well that it rules the Earth and many temples and churches still point towards the rising sun. Today's devotees are solar astronomers and space scientists who stand in awe of the sun's vigor, its violence and its variability. They know how it powers life. Green leaves act as photoelectric cells absorbing the sun's rays. They know how it powers the world's weather mainly by heating the tropical oceans. But the sun's own weather still baffles the scientists. The dark sunspots are scenes of intense magnetism, while great loops in the sun, shaped by magnetic arches, can trigger a magnetic explosion. A solar flare has the force of a billion H-bombs, and concern about the Earth's changing climate gives an urgency to solar research. Some experts doubt whether the recent warming of the Earth is really due to carbon dioxide. Danish scientists have discovered that a speeding of the sun's activity seems to match the changes better. Records of a changeable sun go back thousands of years. 
they show repeated variations from one century to the next. Who can understand the Earth's environment without sufficient knowledge of the sun which warms it and gives us life? Some rays from the sun penetrate even the rocks of the Earth. In an underground laboratory at Gran Sasso in Italy, a tank of liquid detects particles called neutrinos coming from the very core of the sun. But many features of the sun's behavior are invisible from the Earth's surface. Only spacecraft can discover them. The Japanese Yoko satellite monitors X-rays that come from the sun's hot atmosphere. And the European Space Agency is leading a succession of solar missions conducted in partnership with NASA. Instruments in the European Recoverable Carrier, Eureka, monitor changes in the sun's output of energy. Europe's Ulysses spacecraft has flown for five years to travel over the sun's poles and observe its electric wind and its magnetic behavior from new angles. And what Ulysses reveals about cosmic rays in the sun's vicinity will help in interpreting those signs of past variations in the sun's behavior. SOHO is Europe's solar and heliospheric observatory. Its instruments study the motions of the sun's surface and atmosphere from a vantage point on the sunward side of the Earth. Its new insights into the sun's workings may reveal the causes of the variations in its output of radiant energy. But variations in the solar wind of electric particles might also affect the Earth's climate. Closest to home among the European Space Agency's solar missions, Cluster uses four satellites to find out exactly how the solar wind interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. Electrical events thousands of miles out in space regulate the flow of atomic particles to the Earth's upper atmosphere. The solar wind changes from day to day, year to year, and century to century. The Earth's magnetic field varies too over thousands of years. If scientists are to judge the possible consequences for life, they need surer knowledge. They can expect Cluster to deliver it. To prepare four identical spacecraft for the European Space Agency's cluster project, the German prime contractor collaborates with aerospace companies in a dozen European countries. It's like giving birth to quadruplets. Scientists made four identical sets of instruments to fly in them, but there's no safety in numbers here. Every one of the four spacecraft is essential for the mission's success in exploring the Earth's magnetic environment. And like a baby, each requires 100% care to make it fit for a mission in space lasting at least two years. Rocket engineers in France test the hydrogen-oxygen motors of Europe's newest launcher. Ariane 5 will lift all four cluster satellites and fling them into an extended orbit around the equator. Then the satellite's own rocket engines have to stretch the orbit by a sequence of maneuvers and to swing it so that it passes nearly over the Earth's poles. In the end, they're traveling up to 130,000 kilometers from the Earth every 57 hours. Each spacecraft weighs 550 kilograms, not counting its 650 kilograms of fuel. To stay stable, it rotates like a gyro every four seconds. Protruding booms carry the magnetic sensors. Around the rim of the spacecraft, solar cells gather power as they turn in the sunlight. A solid-state memory device replays data accumulated by the instruments. Antennas provide the radio link to ground stations in Europe. Sometimes the long arm of the cluster orbit points towards the sun into the oncoming solar wind. But as the Earth proceeds in its own orbit, cluster eventually reaches downwind into the Earth's magnetic tail. As they keep the satellite quads flying as a family, the mission controllers at the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt adjust their relative positions to suit the scientists' needs. 
An ideal formation achieved in chosen sectors of each orbit makes a tetrahedron with almost equal sides. When a region of strong magnetism is under investigation, the satellites may be just a few hundred kilometers apart. For the weaker magnetism of the Earth's tail, the separations will be wider than the Earth itself. As the four cluster satellites orbit in company through the invisible electrically charged gas that writhes like dragons around the Earth, their sensors tingle. 200 scientists from 17 countries take part in this European mission. Leaders of the teams command their instruments without leaving their home laboratories via a joint science operations center in the UK. All four satellites carry the same instruments. They record differences in magnetism that reveal electric currents flowing in space. Two sets of magnetometers on a boom use delicate transformers to measure the magnetism very sensitively in three directions. A scientist from the UK heads this experiment. A German colleague has charge of the guns of a novel electron drift instrument. Pulses of electrons go out 10 kilometers or more before the magnetic field steers them back. The difference in their time of return on the two sides measures the electric field. Electrons and charged atoms or ions make up the electric gas. A French-led experiment counts and identifies the ions in each satellite's surroundings. Two cluster ion spectrometry instruments look all around as the satellite spins every four seconds. The ions must skim exactly between the two domes to clock in. Changing the voltage between the domes selects ions of different energies. The technique reappears in a British-led experiment called PEACE, which surveys the electrons. One part deals with the faster electrons in the electric gas, another with the slowest ones. An Austrian device, ASPOC, squirts ions of the metal indium out of the satellite. Their departure cancels an electric charge that the satellite acquires when sunlight knocks electrons from its surface. Otherwise, the charge would hinder clusters' most delicate observations. The rapid experiment, headed by a German scientist, hunts for energetic particles from distant regions. They pass through pinholes to reach the detectors, which build up pictures of where the energetic electrons come from and where the charged atoms come from. A consortium of experiments in cluster looks for waves in the electrically charged gas. The principal investigator for staff is a French woman. Three coils riding on a boom detect oscillations in the local magnetism. Spherical sensors whirl on the ends of four wires for the electric field and wave experiment in the charge of a Swedish scientist. Each wire is 50 meters long. Voltage differences from tip to tip measure the electric field in two directions at right angles. Currents in each sphere reveal the density of electrons nearby. Electron densities farther afield disclose themselves to radio pulses sent out by Whisper, the responsibility of a French woman. Whisper can also feel the electric waves. An American-led wideband experiment eavesdrops on these wave sensors. It listens out for signature tunes of Mother Earth, radio whistles and hisses from particles that bounce about near the magnetic poles. A UK scientist coordinates digital wave processing to refine the operations of Cluster's wave consortium. But what makes Cluster so special is the three-dimensional picture of the electrically charged gas that comes when four satellites use the same instruments. A single satellite sees bewildering patterns of electric activity. A pair of satellites begins to distinguish changes in space from changes in time. Three can sketch impressions across a slice of space. Four satellites, as in cluster, give solid shape to the electric dragons in the sky and their flaming breath of energized particles.
Those clouds are a few thousand meters off. The sun's much farther away. If you had electric eyes, you'd see a windscreen filling the midday sky between the clouds and the sun 60,000 kilometers out. That's where the Earth's magnetic shield pushes aside the electric wind which blows non-stop from the sun. In Europe's cluster mission, four satellites fly in company to examine the shield in unprecedented detail. It's ten times wider than the Earth. And on the Earth's dark side, the shield becomes a tube, like a comet's tail, but invisible. When the sun expels electrons and charged atoms into the solar wind, they drag part of the sun's magnetism with them. And when they encounter the Earth's magnetism, they shy off. Currents in the electric wind prevent the two magnetic realms from merging. So while the Earth excludes the solar particles, its own magnetism is bottled up in a magnetosphere. The laws of physics require it. Yet many of the Sun's particles break the law and penetrate the magnetic shield. Once inside it, the Earth's magnetism feeds them into radiation belts around the equator or into the upper air near the poles. Cluster's task is to find out how the solar particles punch holes in the shield. Odd things happen even before the solar wind arrives. It's forewarned of the Earth's presence and slows down. The resulting congestion makes a bow shock. What unknown signals travel upwind to give the warning? Cluster must find out and discover how strong electric and magnetic fields accelerate some of the plasma. Earthward of the bow shock, the wind is turbulent. Do strange electric and magnetic waves insinuate some of the solar particles through the magnetic barrier? Or do strong electric fields shoot them through? The direction of the field lines of the Earth's magnetism sometimes runs counter to the magnetism carried by the solar wind. Then penetrations may occur. In theory, the lines can reconnect in a magnetic short circuit. They rip the barrier open and let the solar particles flood in. Cluster can check these theories and see whether any breaches of the shield are local or widespread. Other solar particles slip around to the dark side of the Earth. They sidle into the Earth's tail, where folded magnetic fields create another zone of contradictory magnetism. A gust in the solar wind can trigger an explosive reconnection, which catapults solar particles in through the Earth's back door. Simultaneously, the Earth lays a magnetic egg as a mass of particles shoots away downwind. The far-ranging Japanese satellite Geotail has observed these plasmoids, while Cluster homes in on the scene of the magnetic explosions. Deep dents occur in the Earth's shield over the magnetic poles. In each of the polar regions, there seems to be an open gate where solar particles can penetrate the Earth's magnetic defenses. Tracing the routes by which they reach the entry point is a task for the cluster mission. Events over the polar regions deserve special attention because it's here that auroras light up the sky when the invading solar particles finally slam into the Earth's atmosphere. In northern parts of Scandinavia, Canada and Russia, only a cushion of air separates the inhabitants from the flames of the sun. Auroras that light the sky a hundred kilometers overhead are the flickers of electric particles flung out from the sun's stormy atmosphere. They come in the solar wind and the Earth's magnetism guides them to the polar regions. They assault the air in an oval ring around the North Magnetic Pole and over Antarctica too. Europe's space mission, Cluster, will help to solve the riddle of the auroras. Its four satellites must track down the electrical machinery in space that operates nature's disco lights. These are the most conspicuous link between events on the sun and on the Earth. The auroral zones are critical regions for possible effects on the Earth's weather. 
And there are now suspicions that energetic solar particles can reach down to the ozone layer and damage it. Storms on the sun move the auroral oval outwards from the pole. Vital for clusters investigations are simultaneous observations from the ground. For example, special radars like ISCAT in northern Scandinavia reveal heating and vigorous motions in the upper air provoked by the bombardment from the sun. Early in the space age, discoveries complicated the picture. The Earth possesses its own stock of electrons in a radiation belt. And when particles arrive from the sun, the Earth's magnetism brushes them aside. Scientists wondered if the solar wind simply shook the Earth's magnetism and jolted electrons out of the radiation belts to cause the auroras. Certainly the Earth's magnetic domain can shrink dramatically when the sun is stormy. But now a leading theory asserts that magnetic explosions on the dark side of the Earth send solar electrons in by that route. The scene's a special target for clusters' investigations. Electrons coming this way in may account for the most familiar greenish drapery in the night sky. But that's only half the story. Other auroras aren't green but red. Made by less energetic but more widespread electrons, they glow higher in the air. The red auroras are often hard to see because they occur towards the sunlit side of the Earth. And some experts think that the electrons of the red auroras come in at the front of the Earth's magnetic shield. Cluster will examine the traffic of particles on this route too. The mission will also pay special attention to dents in the shield over the magnetic poles. Do the activities there help or hinder solar particles trying to reach the auroral zone? Cluster will check all the possible entry points for the sun's electrons that write their messages in the sky. Then scientists may at last agree on what the auroras really tell us about the Earth's exposure to the sun's electric flames. Electrical events observed by Europe's four cluster satellites thousands of kilometers out in space are bizarre by earthly standards. Lightning strokes have some kinship with them. Otherwise, our world of solids, liquids and gases is orderly by comparison. The weather is the most complicated process in plain view. But suppose the wind were electric. Suppose clouds bounced off one another and wrestled with the Earth's magnetism. Suppose masses of electric air could take off into space. Then our weather would be like the sun's. Solids, liquids and ordinary gases don't exist in the sun. It's made of plasma, an electric gas of charged atoms and free electrons. Plasma coheres like a liquid, conducts currents like a metal and writhes like a serpent. The sun's magnetism can repress the bubbling plasma and make dark sunspots. But sometimes the plasma wins the contest and escapes into the solar system. The encounters between the plasma of the solar wind and the Earth's magnetism are clusters' immediate concern. But the findings have wider applications in astronomy. Expulsions of plasma masses from the Earth's magnetic tail are like ejections of plasma seen in comets. The events in the Earth's tail are driven by short circuits in the magnetic field. Much bigger magnetic explosions of the same kind may occur on the Sun and trigger solar flares. Almost everything in the universe is made of plasma. The stars, the hot environs of newborn stars, the tenuous debris of dying stars. In the heart of a galaxy, a giant black hole wraps itself in plasma and sends electric jets racing into space to create lobes of radio noise a million light years wide. In the Earth's neighborhood, nature puts on an exhibition of many kinds of plasma behavior. By deploying four satellites together, Cluster is the first space mission capable of scrutinizing it in three dimensions. Who can say what new knowledge will come from this grand experiment in plasma physics?
or what applications its discoveries will find in the wider human effort to understand the cosmos. Why the universe itself began as a mass of plasma, 